Good evening. Um, hope everybody can hear me. Thank you for coming. First of all, apologies about uh, changing locations on all of you uh, with one day's notice. Uh, you know, red alert and therefore no rains. We could have had it at the gallery, but we didn't want to risk um, the rains. So thank you for making it here. Thank you for uh, following the rules. Uh, it's a little strict with uh, for men. You can't wear slippers, you can't wear shorts, but thank you for uh, complying with that this evening. Um, a quick uh, welcome to all of you from Ashwitas. Uh, we are, in, uh, for those of you uh, who are new to Ashwitas, we're an art gallery based out of Mylapur. Uh, we just celebrated 20 years, um, somehow managed to have survived uh, in the art business. And um, we primarily focus on artists from Madras and the Madras School. That has been our uh, agenda uh, for most of our uh, gallery's uh, career. So uh, I'm, what I'm gonna do, however, is quickly uh, call upon the dynamic lady, Upasna, to come and talk to all of you about exactly why we're here, which is the Madras Art Weekend. She will introduce you all to what's been happening for the last uh, yesterday, today, and what's coming up tomorrow. And after that, I will uh, hand over the mic to our, our lovely moderator for the evening, Shreya. Thank you for coming once again. There are drinks, you can grab a drink and sit down and relax and enjoy this evening. Thank you. I've actually prepared for this speech for a really long time. I've stood in front of every single mirror at the cost of sounding um, like vain. My whole family thought I was crazy, but um, I would prepare all the time. And as I stand in front of you today, I kind of feel a bit speechless, but um, Madras Art Weekend was actually meant to be something of a gallery hop. I would go to a Mumbai gallery weekend or a Delhi contemporary art week, and I would always wonder why the bloody hell not Chennai? And it was that dream that literally wanted me to just actually have a gallery hop, but I didn't realize how massive this thing would become. Every single organization in the city has come forward to support me. Uh, one of my, um, it was like actually a dream to just have a very simple weekend, but uh, the weekend has blown way out of proportion and there's no turning back. I would not have been able to do this without the blessings of my guide and mentor, who is Mata Amritananda, my Devi. I went to her and I said, I need blessings galore. I don't think I would be able to pull this off without a God above me. And yesterday, I had a million people calling to say, hey, um, there's a storm coming. I don't think your show is gonna be happening at our opening inauguration. And I said, no. It will, and it was magnificent. Yesterday evening was even more spectacular, and I would not have been able to do this without my co-curator, who's smiling very genially, but he's wondering why the hell he ever met me. He's thinking about how he can have a one-way ticket to the Maldives and never see me again, but he's stuck, and he has no choice about it, and that's fine with me. I would not have done it without my all-girls team, who have been absolutely fantastic. I literally have the editor of Architectural Digest wanting to rob them, but they're unavailable, they're mine. <laughs> so um, I also wanna say a big, big thank you to all the people who've collaborated, my partners, uh, which are Hitchki, who actually believed in my dream and came forward to, you know, literally like put everything on standby for me. I want to thank Kiran Rao, uh, who is in the audience for also being a huge influence in my life. Um, I've always been inspired by her vision, her strength, and she also opened her doors for me in um, having Amethyst be our venue partners. And thank you so much, Kiran. Today's event at Folly with Bobo Calcutta was absolutely spectacular. Each piece was an installation and I cannot tell you how many people have flown from all over the country uh, just to be here for Madras Art Weekend. I would like to thank um, 
Ashwitas for being um, great supporters of this dream as well, and for all the panelists who've flown from all over the country for this uh, talk. Um, Bahavana Kakar from Delhi, Atiyan from Mumbai, and Sanjay Sar from Bangalore. Um, the representation has been phenomenal at every level, and I just cannot thank the universe, thank each one of you taking the time for today. So thank you so much. I'm not going to take any more of your time. I'm going to hand over um, to, yes, to Ashwin back. Thank you, Upasna. That was fantastic. Um, I'm now going to just quickly uh, invite our three panelists for the evening uh, onto the stage. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Kumar, please. Um, Bhavna and Atyan, please come up on stage. And of course, I would like to um, bring Shreya up here. And she will do a quick introduction. I've thrown it back right back at her, because she's the one who's been preparing very studiously. She has a book and all that stuff. Um, and she will introduce you uh, to the panel very quickly and then start off this evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome. My name is Shreya Nagarajan Singh. I am going to throw it back at Ashwin and not introduce our panelists because that's what they're going to be doing for like 10 minutes each. But to basically give you an idea of what we're going to be doing today and talking to about today is talking about how to program and how galleries program and curate. So one of the discussions we were having is what is the difference between programming and curating. And the kind of mi middle ground we reached is the fact that uh, programming is what is more audience-led and it also includes outreach, whereas curation is what a curator is keen to show the audience, whereas the other programming is led by what the audience wants to see. So, but before that, I do want to also acknowledge uh, and thank Ashwin for putting this panel together. And also to mention that Ashwita has just turned 20 last month. So a big round of applause for that 20 years being in any business is quite remarkable and uh, Ashwin has done it like a king so also want to uh, acknowledge Upasna and her fantastic team the fact that we're bringing the south into focus because we're so used to going to Bombay and Delhi for everything contemporary art and I know the only reason or the main reason people come to Chennai is basically to see the temples or to see Carnatic music or classical arts and so thank you for putting contemporary arts on the map and I'm sure this is good, just the beginning and it's going to be a grand success so thank you for everything, that, the very hard work that you've been doing as well. So with that, we're just going to jump in. I'd like to tell you a little bit about what the evening is going to entail, so you're all ready for it. So we're going to have short presentations by each one of them, and they're going to be talking about what they do, their gallery, uh, how their process is, look at some of their artwork that they have been, uh, that they show in their galleries, as well as talking about how their programming informs their curation. Then we'll have a small panel discussion, and then followed by a very fun, Karan Johar-esque rapid fire round, and then we'll open it out to uh, the audience. Um, so without any further ado, can I hand over the mic to Sanjay? Okay, so Sakshi Gallery started in Chennai, in Khadar Nawaz Khan Road, and it was set up by uh, Geeta Mehra, very much a Chennai person. And I'm here uh, mostly because Geeta isn't. But uh, I have been uh, with, I mean, we've been partners since 88, and uh, she's been spearheading the gallery in these years, and I've had a ringside seat. So in some sense, it's always nice to experience something at close quarters. Uh, something struck a chord, so I'm going to do a little bit out of turn. When Ashwin mentioned that he's been in this business for 20 years, and the fact that he survived is something uh, proud of, which I, which I think it is. So I'll, just a little bit of, a couple of lines which I'll read out. Every gallerist in Mumbai and Delhi is an anxious being, acutely aware of the mortality rate of artists and ideas. The art world is no place for faint hearts. Tentative efforts fail easily. Running a gallery is a lonely pursuit carried out in a quiet place that comes alive occasionally for a show opening and then lapses into silence. It has the same desperate question hanging on its head that a small town airport with a flight a day has. Is this a viable life form? Those that survive are the committed ones. Over the years, they become impresarios. Their practice creates a persona, one with the art that graces the walls of their cube. So we have other galleries as well today, but 
Essentially, a gallerist starts representing a particular persona which is defined by the art that graces the walls and the cube. That essentially is what a gallery is all about. So uh, I'll introduce you to the kind of shows that we've had. We have a history. And uh, Robert Hughes said that art is essentially what? It's negotiating a sense of history with an experience of the world. So I'd like to present to you the experience with history of what Sakshi has done in the art world today. Uh, this is the space that we have. Uh, we have. We have looked at various spaces. We started in Chennai, we went to Bangalore, then we went to Bombay, and then it's Bombay where we are at right now, in Kolaba. This is in a place called uh, Pasta Lane. And we have two floors, uh, ground floor and, the, and this is the first floor. Uh, and uh, what I'll take you through quickly is uh, the archives that we have between uh, 1990 and 2005, just to give you a sense of uh, what the shows we've been having, it's not comprehensive. So we had, for example, a show of R.K. Lakshman. Uh, those days he was doing crows in Chennai, but he also used to do caricatures, which were extremely interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jay Shri Chakravarti. That was the logo that we had. The logo was done by uh, Achutan Kudalu, uh, artist from Chennai. That is uh, his logo. Uh, K.G. Subramaniam, we had uh, multiple shows. I think seven or eight uh, solos of uh, K.G. Subramaniam. Uh, this is uh, Dashrath Patel. These are collages that Dashrath Patel made. Uh, we had a showing of them as well. Krishan Khanna, we had uh, solos of uh, Krishan in 1995. Uh, this was uh, an example of a group show those days. You talk of curation. Uh, this was, uh, curation was something which was a little more loose in those days. It wasn't as tightly knit. Today you have curators who are qualified, academically qualified, and there's a practice, there's a history to curatorial practice. Curators are there in museums, they're there in galleries. Uh, those days we used to have group shows, loosely speaking, and they perhaps at some point in time would have a catalog, or they would, I mean, what we have today is very few catalogs, we have just wall text. But yeah, this is an example of uh, a show put together of rare and important paintings. Uh, Rekha Rodvitya has been with our gallery since the beginning, as has uh, Surindra Nair. So this is one of the early shows that we had of hers. Vivan Sundaram, we've had shows uh, of Vivan. I think we've had three or four solos. Uh, this is another example of a show. Uh, this is Gulam Sheikh that we partnered uh, with Vadera, an early uh, show of his, 2001. Hussein Saab, this is a serigraph. Uh, Manjeet. Manjeet was our, uh, with our gallery uh, from, from the beginning. We've had uh, seven or eight uh, solos of his. We asked a lot of people in Chennai when we had a show here to please, I had to beg people to go and acquire his works, but I wasn't successful. Uh, yeah. Okay, the other thing that we did was we had an international practice. Uh, we tried this. Uh, this was uh, a few years ago. We thought we should bring in works from outside the country. So we have a roster of artists who we went through. We're not doing that that often these days because the response honestly wasn't encouraging. There isn't much uh, knowledge of the art practice abroad here. People are not familiar with artists, uncomfortable with, perhaps with paying the prices which some of these works of art have. Uh, some examples, a uh, Julian Opi. Uh, we had two solos of his. He's based in London and he uh, is very good at uh, stilling the landscape, stilling the, the streets of the city, uh, paring them down to essentials. And he shows people in motion, uh, usually walking, and for some reason women undressing. Uh, this was a show curated by B.C. Silva and uh, it was famous, I think, for works of uh, Ella Natsui. We had actually uh, four works of Ellen Atsui, and we didn't realize how big he was till we saw the price, and then we also saw the kind of people from uh, the world market who chased these works, burned down and, and bought them. Uh, Gregory Crutzen. Now, we had two solos of Gregory. Uh, he's uh, the first time that I've seen a photographer, and these are large-scale works, perhaps as large as the screen itself. And uh, he said uh, he had a DOP. He works with a DOP. So the first time that I came across a photographer, artist who needed a director of photography to set up uh, these shots. These are all staged uh, shots. Uh, we had a gallery for a brief while in Taiwan. So this is one example of the show that we had in, in Taiwan, a Japanese artist. This is the other showing of Julian. Uh, this is one work he did. He came to Bombay. He saw people walking in Bombay and he brought in one or two works quickly. Uh, uh, then I'll move on quickly to the modern masters. Uh, we've had a history of showing uh, some of these modern masters. This is uh, Souza. Uh, 
Souza is again somebody who I met personally and was completely blown away by, by his ability to get under your skin, which was deliberate, something that he reveled in. And I could see the, where the sacred and the profane came from in his works just by meeting the man. Uh, Jogen, we've had solos of Jogen. KG was an artist who we met very often, and I think to, to some extent, sometimes artists influence the practice of a gallery purely by being who they are. And KG is uh, a person who, I think as a person, as, as a, more than an artist, uh, influenced uh, Gita and me in, in many ways. He was a terrific, and the level of energy he had, we went to Shanti Niketan often just to meet him. And we saw he's done these two uh, building-sized installations which he has painted. He's painted outside the building. And he insisted we come on a full moon night because the, the work showed up uh, so well on a full moon night. It is worth the ticket to go to Shanti Niketan to see the other masters also who are decorated the walls inside and outside of buildings. But those two KG installations are something else. Uh, Manjeet. Manjeet was a friend of the gallery more than anything else. Uh, I think he was a friend of ours and uh, it was wonderful. Uh, Sufi is an overused word, but I think the spirit of Sufi was something which resided in Manjeet, in which I think to some extent informs his work. Uh, I mean, this particular one as well, but others. The, the sensibility is that of a Sufi. Uh, Jahangir. Now, a most impressive, most correct, most polite person I've ever met in the art world. Not to say that they're good qualities, but he just happened to be one. And he would remember anything that you told him. He would remember the names of your daughters. And this was both him and his wife. Uh, thorough gentleman, a wonderful person to meet, uh, a kind of old world sensibility that I have not seen since. Nalini Malani, uh, we have uh, showed all her initial shows, she moved on thereafter, but a lot of her initial shows including uh, performance art uh, in Bombay, we were involved with them. Sudhir Patwardhan, who seems to reside in Thane and bring out that, that kind of uh, Bombay suburban sensibility with the people living their daily lives, we, uh, we had a few solos of Sudhir. Vivan again. Uh, this was from the uh, series which uh, based on the Iraq war where he used oil, uh, oil on uh, paper. Himmat Shah. Uh, uh, we, he was at a little bit at a low ebb when we went to Ghadi studio and met him. And we saw the works he had done, especially the terracotta works that he did, which were quite fabulous. So we, we did a couple of shows of him and brought him back, to, so to speak, in the limelight. Of course, he, thereafter he went on to bronze and other galleries. But those initial uh, terracotta pieces are, are quite special. Contemporary artists, I'll run through them quickly. Uh, you must be familiar with quite a few of them. So this is uh, from Madras, Nandini Valli. She did uh, two series uh, on Krishna. I just love the, the sensibility of these works. Uh, Amit Ambalal, perhaps the biggest collector of Pichwais in the country. Uh, wonderful artist as well. Sumit Rajendran, a sculptor who uh, is based in Delhi. Sean Mendes, a young artist uh, in Bombay. Surendra Nair. Uh, so he is uh, perhaps a precursor to this entire Malayali presence which is there in uh, the art world today. Uh, the huge number of them which are there. They come from a very rich uh, cultural heritage, a rich cultural background. Uh, and so rich that they have narratives which often uh, steep into their works. And in the case of Surendra, it's best that you see his work and not ask him about the narrative because if he speaks, it's hard to figure out uh, where exactly he's going, but uh, his works have this theatrical, it's like a performance. You have raised a curtain and there is some performance happening. Shine Shivan, again, uh, another artist who uh, will be showing in, in October. Uh, I hope you guys can make it. Sorry, in, in December. A wonderful artist who's worked in different uh, media earlier, including uh, staged uh, photography. Uh, he's done a lot of these large, powerful works, um, huge uh, sizes of paper, and now he's onto this uh, Nandan series, more to do with Krishna. He spends most of his time among cows in Mathura. Teja Gavankar, a young artist. Uh, Vale Shinde, uh, he's an amazing uh, story. Uh, he came from a modest background and he is now, literally has half his village working with him in a, a studio in Bombay, in one of the suburbs. Uh, I like this particular work because rhino horns are supposed to be precious, so there you have it, it's there in gold color. Uh, this is another young artist, Siddharth Kararwal. Uh, he's got a phenomenal uh, sense of humor. He's also got this uh, uh, adult comic uh, kind of uh, sensibility which comes uh, if you, if you, in a lot of these adult comics that you get these days. He brings that sensibility and the contemporary political scenario and he's got a cheeky sense of humor. This of course is based on Dali and there's a carrot in the eye which is based on a popular recent fable. Another work of his is called Bus to Nowhere. 
And there are characters that you can see, which you will be able to identify uh, here and there. This is Ankush Safaya. So a lot of uh, contemporary artists, the new contemporary art uh, is, uh, approaches uh, uh, a spare, uh, a kind of whittled down sensibility. Uh, it lacks a narrative sense and uh, sometimes approaches uh, design. Uh, that's, I see a lot of contemporary art going in that direction. This is Lakshman Rao, again, a bit of politi uh, political background to some of his works. Reddy is, um, I don't know, there must be a few people who have Reddy in their houses here, but uh, he's been around for a while. And uh, yeah, he seems to, the market continues to respond to him. Uh, Vivek Velasini is again uh, a guy, and I, he's the second guy I've seen whose titles, you know, are very long and uh, quite confusing. So this is, and for those who sing the national anthem in somebody else's mother tongue. So that's the title, and he's got these large scale photographs which he stages, uh, you, which are quite interesting. Yeah, Rekha Rodvitya. So she's uh, another of these artists who's been around. Uh, she marries this wonderful uh, f feminine touch to a very strong feminist uh, stance. She's able to bring these two together. There's a bit of humor that I find in her work and uh, or like a certain sexiness which her, her work has, which I find alluring. I have actually just started this gallery program only um, in March this year, so it's a baby. But uh, we do come from a legacy gallery. My grandparents started a gallery in 1963, one of the oldest contemporary galleries in, Bom in India. And um, so the, pro the nature of the gallery has always been to build um, careers of artists. So um, moving forward, I thought that it's my time to step in and do that. And also, I was kind of getting frustrated working with senior artists and didn't feel like there was room for me to grow in that. So that's the older gallery. That's my mom and her parents in the start gallery was started in 63 then she moved to a larger space um it's been around uh, this space has been around for like seven eight years more than 2007 sorry um and just in march we started a new program we don't have a lot of artists in our roster yet but we can just go through the few so um i started with my colleague actually sunena who's um in the photo on the right and um we thought we wanted to build a program for younger artists, uh, bring in younger audiences. To be honest, like it's we found we found that people our age and people from my generation were finding it very difficult to engage with art. So we wanted something that's approachable, lighter. You know, I mean, with that we we want to bring that intellectualism in, but like slowly and like get people to gradually get to know that. Um, so we actually are in an apartment because um, it's, an, it's an apartment I used to live in. It's in the heart of Kolaba, very close to Sakshi. And it's in the art district, it's all walkable. And I mean, w what's nice about Bombay is all the galleries are very close to one another. So um, you can go to the next slide. So one of the things that's also housed in this uh, space is the Chem Old Archives, which is like dating 60 years and more back. I mean, it goes further back. These are some of the artists we're representing. Uh, I mean, we're not we're not yet representing artists. We're just seeing how it goes. We're um, working with artists and seeing how the program develops with them. So actually, I just opened an exhibition by Gurjeet Singh on Thursday, just day before yesterday, and he's a uh, he's a small he's a 28 year old from uh, Chandigarh. He studied in Chandigarh, but he actually lives in the border of uh, Pakistan, India, like. 50 kilometers outside of Amritsar and um, he, so he's from a very small village background and like suddenly he came he's a queer artist and suddenly he came to Bombay and you know he's being exposed to like this crazy like uh, art, like people who are so receptive to him so um, I'll take you through a little bit more of his work that's another artist Ritika Pandey um, so these Ritika Gurjeet and the next artist Tarani, they did the uh, residency with us, I'll come to that. Next slide, Vinita. So this was the first show we opened with. So these are our four artists that we have on board with us so far. Um, so because of the nature of the space, it's not a conventional gallery, it's in a home. We conduct uh, residencies through off-season, which is summer monsoon, so from around May till about September. The, the, the nature of the space allows for people to live. I also lived in that apartment. That's actually my bedroom. We did, we did this residency and we did open studio nights. So it, it, people from Bombay really like, were very receptive to it, to see artists practicing and being able to like 
interact with them while they're creating the work. You know, once you see a final work, it's very difficult to really understand how difficult and tedious the process even is. So it was a really nice way for people who don't have much exposure to art to get to know, you know, the rigor and the talent that goes into creating the work. Um, so this is the show we just opened on Thursday, and it was extremely well responded to. Gurjeet, um, he has no art background. He was uh, a queer boy in a small village in Punjab and was bullied as a kid, you know. He was like, ladke mujhe pasand nahi karte the and you drag karte the and everything. So um, he's created like these forms which are sculptural elements of heads taken from real life stories of people around him. And um, they use they use from scrap fabric. He make he he uses work he 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 makes work from like discarded fabric. So I'll come to a little bit another project we did with him. Um, this is another exhibition we just recently have. We've only had three exhibitions so far. This was our second exhibition. This was called Hearts on Fire, which was again curated by a very very young curator, first time curator. So we're trying to also not just give opportunities to artists, but young writers, curators. You know, we want to diversify the entire ecosystem. I mean, bring in the entire ecosystem. Um, so the other thing that Sunaina and I are very very like passionate about, I would say, is music. We love tech music, so we've partnered. We we've done a partnership with like. Q Radio, which is a music um, collective, and uh, we had a gig, and I mean, it's also a way to engage people to come to a gallery. This was actually at a different location, but we wanted to bring people into art and, you know, bring, bring them in through different various ways that engage people. So we did a, fa a collaboration with Bodice. It's a fashion design label based in Delhi. And um, so this was during India Art Fair last year in May, which was um, just this year actually, sorry. Um, and uh, Gurjeet actually used all the fa waste, you can go to the next slide. Um, Gurjeet used the waste fabric from the, from the clothes of bodice to create these um, busts, you know, these heads that he creates. So it was really interesting to see this like um, collaboration happen between art and design. And at the same time, it's also like, you know, these heads are like so deformed and they, they're ugly looking. I mean, they're not ugly, but they're trying to like make you look ugly and their tongues are sticking out and nose is really big. But then fashion is so contradicting. It's about like this pure line and like how you look your best beautiful self. So it was really nice to see this contrast together. And then we had a little evening of, uh, about it, and these were the works on display. Uh, then the other thing we do at our, through our programming is um, a lot of workshops to bring in like friends of mine, friends of Sunaina's, just people from Bombay, it's the word spreads Instagram. And um, you can go through the net. So we did a ceramic workshop with Vinita Mungi, so people understood the nature of the medium. Then we did a screen printing workshop, and we've just done various workshops through the so the last few months, about nine months, I would say. And we've done a dark room workshop. This was an all day long event where people learned how to f develop film camera. We converted the kitchen into a dark room. And it was a really fun experience. So, you know, which, what we're trying to do basically is get people who do not get to work with these mediums, understand what the artists go through, their rigor, so that they can engage more. So that's what we're trying to do here. And um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Satyan. Bhavna, do you want to take? Thank you, Ashwin, for inviting me. Thank you, Pasana. Thank you, Prabhu. It's great to be here amongst friends and new friends, hopefully. Uh, to give you a little brief about myself, I don't have a legacy gallery or uh, you know, 25 years in the business. Uh, I'm, but I did go to study art. As a child, I wanted to become an artist. Uh, I joined uh, the art school in Chandigarh. I realized very soon that I have absolutely no talent to be a painter. Uh, even my family would not want to put up my artworks that I would create, but I was always very interested in the history of art. So I went on to study at MS University Baroda and I realized that that is kind of uh, my calling and what I want to do. So which is why uh, I'm very early in, in my uh, call it days, I started to edit and write, uh, also curate a little bit, but not so much. So once I passed out, I thought that maybe, uh, you know, with this background that I have in art history, I shall be able to show and see the kind of art that I 
was uh, you know familiar with or the kind of artists that I wanted to see and uh, and some of the artists who were really really good and talented but they would not get an opportunity in galleries but I realized very soon that uh, for a young pass out from college curation was kind of uh, non-existent there was literally no platforms there uh, very very few non-profit spaces uh, there was only Koj at that point and maybe a few in Bangalore but this is I'm talking about 2002-2003 uh, so I'm often asked that you know why did you start a gallery was it the business because I don't really come from a business family and I said no I would just started it because I wanted to put up exhibitions things that like I said I wanted to see uh, so the presentation is really, really long, almost uh, self-explanatory because there's a lot of text, so it f it'll feel like a little bit like a, a classroom, <laughs> but if you can just keep going through the images and I'll keep speaking. So I launched the magazine. Also at that point, there were quite a few journals which were there, which we were familiar with when I was studying in Baroda, which was, there was Rishtik, there was Journal of Arts and Ideas. Uh, when I passed, I mean, those, those had already shut by then, and uh, there was Art India magazine and there was Galleria. And uh, so also, I, like I said, I, my first stint as a consulting editor was with something which was happening in India Habitat Center, which is also still around, but comes out annually. So I was the editorial coordinator there. And when in 2008, 7, 8, I realized that, you know, I think there is the space and place for an independent art publication is when I launched Take On Art, and that's the magazine. I launched the gallery Latitude 28, Latitude 28 being the latitude of New Delhi 28.3. And, uh, and interestingly, the name Take On Art, you know, uh, uh, I was confused on what I should name it. A lot of people said keep the gallery and the magazine as the same name. And, uh, and very early on, I realized that conflict is not something, a space that I want to be in, you know, because this publication needs to be independent of the gallery, which is a commercial organization. And, uh, and of course, Latitude backs, you know, its sister concern, Take. But I wanted the names to be very different, and I was kind of brainstorming on it. So also talking about one of the artists you work with, Manjunath Kamath, I was sitting with him. So gallerists and artists have a special relationship. Can we keep going with the slides? There are tons of them. <laughs> so, uh, and I was like, okay, you know, so what should I call it? And uh, he's like, what do you want to take from it? I said, I think maybe I should call it take. You know, it's my take on art, and, uh, my, and of course it's been... Uh, a take of a lot of other interventionists and editors who've been part of the issues, also artists. Uh, Shireen, your mom, Sanjay, who all contributed to the magazine. So I started with, this is my first exhibition, which was actually a collaborative one with Seven Art uh, that is now merged with uh, Nature Mort now, uh, Reclaim, Recite, Recycle. So we, uh, uh, so this was a show I independently curated uh, and, uh, but it was with Latitude and Seven Art. The, so initially, I'm just gonna show some pictures, uh, images of uh, curated exhibitions and how galleries, like I said, although I came from that background, I wanted to give the space two new ideas. This was Avni Doshi, who's now a very celebrated author. This was one of her first exhibitions that she did, which was on 50 years of the birth control pill. It kind of shocked the audience at times, like, okay, what kind of an exhibition is this? So uh, we've seen a lot of modern artists that Sanjay showed, like, you know, at that point when I started, I was like, I don't, I mean, I don't think I can work with that. I don't even relate to it. And they were like, Way, way more intimidating and you know and everybody had seen it and they were already established galleries which were showing that kind of work so for me to make you know my own kind of make space I wanted to show interesting contemporary art with newer ideas this was Jasmine Wahi a New York curator uh, somebody had not even met till the day of the exhibition because she's based in New York and uh, uh, she liked the programming that we had started doing and approached me and did this kind of a diaspora South Asian artist exhibition and that from the beginning that we've been showing a lot of artists from the South Asian diaspora and South Asia itself and we continue to do so represent some also this was an exhibition that Rashid Rana curated for us uh, one question the galleries are always asked is how do you pick up your artists you know how do you show this one over that one uh, how do art, you know, artists ask us, how do we approach you and uh, what is the curation here, you know? So it is, it is, it is, I think in most cases it's organic, but at some point in the 
beginning it's trial and error and you know you see some you show some you sell some you don't sell some you like some you don't like some but uh, i think over a period of time that you realize what exactly uh, is your program you know which is what we are talking today curation and program and what you want to stand by uh, nancy ajania uh, again a very very uh, relevant curator. So this was one of the issues of the magazine as well. So mostly the magazine is run parallel of the gallery, but in this one, uh, this exhibition, Sacred Scared, we had the, uh, the issue of the magazine on the same theme as the exhibition in the gallery. So it, it was kind of a compendium, a journal, uh, to uh, the uh, exhibition itself, which uh, which, you know, which not like a catalog, but more like a research-based exhibition. Uh, this is more recent. This is a print exhibition. So from the beginning, I was very interested in certain mediums, you know. Though I was artist-specific and not medium-specific, but I uh, have always been interested in printmaking, and I feel that it does not get its due in with the collectors or with the Indian art world as much as, much as it should have. So this was quite recent at the Sri Dharani Gallery that we did this a large exhibition of kind of 100 years of printmaking. Uh, so special projects at art fairs, again, a part of the gallery programming. We've, yeah, we've kind of gone to Guangzhou and Hong Kong, Hong Kong Basel, uh, <laughs> Art State, Singapore, like tons of tons of them. Like I said, trial and error, you try everything till you know, you know what works for you and till you don't lose enough money to know you don't need to do it again. So this was, yeah, this is in Art House Singapore. Move ahead. Dhaka Art Summit. We did, we've had uh, some wonderful artists who performed on the, on the uh, you know, ongoing exhibitions. Some of them overlapped with the, the kind of writing program. So with the magazine, we've also been doing some very interesting critical, critical writing programs over the years all over the country, inviting younger, newer writers um, to have kind of these uh, uh, mentorship sessions. We also do a writing award, which enables uh, a writer to uh, go to Switzerland for a period of 60 days, do his research. We'll be launching our next, uh, the fourth, fourth edition of the award, a, writing, a, a, a book that will be coming out in the Kochi Binale. So then like, you know, like, oh, we've, we've done many, many solo shows. Again, some of the artists we continue to work with. Shweta Bhattad is one such artist. She works also, she's a performance artist, a sculptor. We've shown her right from the days of a college in Baroda. And uh, this is one of her performances that was in Koj. Uh, right now she's working, she's done some very, very interesting projects. So as a gallery, I feel that in India, because we do not have enough of non-profit or independent bodies to support projects, it's mostly the galleries that double up as everything for a lot of artists, you know. I call them, like, I, I tell them that, you know, I'm like your tour manager and your aunt and your friend and, you know, and, uh, and of course, uh, dealer, uh, Kartik Sood, again, somebody we showed initially who's moved down like many artists do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Khadim Ali uh, was, I mean, he was, uh, I would say he's uh, one of the artists I'm very, very proud to be working with. He's an Afghani who took refugee in, Afga in uh, Australia, uh, studied in Pakistan. Again, I met him at one of the fairs uh, when we did Art Dubai, and organically we kind of started speaking, and he said, you know, I love India and I'd love to show there. I'd always admired his work, I'd seen his work in Documenta, and now we proudly represent him here. Sudipta Das, so one of the few artists that I would, I, mean, I think there are some visuals where we worked with the artists right from their college days and, uh, and uh, uh, we've seen, oh, time, okay. Can you just show the slides then, yeah. And how their journey has grown. Some are artists that we also share with other galleries like Vaswo, we represent his photographs, but his paintings are shown by other galleries. So there are these, you know, kind of these fine lines in the art world where you represent, you show some, you, re you, you know, work long term. So Sudipta, again, somebody's career I'm very, very proud of. So um, I just want to go a little bit to the basics because as I look into the audience, I see there are different types of, uh, of, of collectors here, uh, different artists. I can see a whole bunch of artists who have come, uh, regular gallery goers as well. And I know there are a few people 
as well who are not used to going to galleries. And so I would like to just talk a little bit about the different formats. So, you know, we're all on the same page. So every gallery, in India at least, this is the format, that either you have a solo show or you have a group show, right? And the programming and the curation is either done in-house by either your gallery manager or your in-house curator or the gallerists themselves, or on some occasions they hire an external curator to um, curate the show. When they work in-house, usually they have uh, their gallery or the estate that they represent, work with a certain number of artists who they represent or they support, and they work within those list of artists. And sometimes when you have an external curator is when I think the, there is a chance for you to bring artists who the gallery doesn't work with or who are unrepresented or some other gallery represents. And that's kind of how the system goes. So this should give you roughly an idea of the landscape of how galleries curate, right? And so now I just want to jump in first, Sanjay, if, I don't, if you don't mind, is... Um, so you, you're, Sakshi is like the OG gallery that everybody looked at in terms of what worked, learned their lessons, and of course you have a phenomenal list of artists who you've helped over time. So really my question is, is uh, when, you, when you're representing a large number of artists over time, and now I'm sure you have to pick and choose, how do you, um, how do you sort of choose the well-known artists versus the emerging artists? And uh, what is that ratio that Sakshi curates? When from what we have spoken before, you almost do 10 to 11 shows a year, which is quite uh, a large number, right? So, we, we don't have any breakup in terms of working either with contemporaries or with, with masters. Or essentially, the programming is also based on how artists produce work, and uh, a lot of artists have different uh, pace of uh, working. So, some artists take more time, some artists take less time. And we have to be conscious of the fact when is an artist show ready to be shown. And you know, it does happen sometimes that artists are working and Geeta normally visits studios and uh, takes a look at the work going on. And at some point in time, the artist and Geeta will agree that yes, I think we, we probably have a show in our hands. So the programming to some extent is scheduled and some quite often rescheduled mm -hmm. based on uh, the work that is available which from which a show can emerge. This is as far as solos are concerned. We are conscious of younger artists, what we try and do is to have group shows, uh, introduce the work of artists in group shows initially, uh, and look at the artists over a period of time till we figure that, okay, perhaps the practice has the, the inner strength to, to for, for it to be a solo. Mm -hmm. uh, and that takes some time. Uh, sorry? Yeah. You can hear me now? Yeah, so, uh, so solos for young artists, it really depends, it takes time. So p part of the programming is based on the work that is available with the gallery which is from which shows can emerge. Curator shows, like you mentioned, happen based on external curators. And like you said, it's, it's nice to have uh, a fresh perspective. And uh, uh, that really comes from, from external curators. And there are today uh, quite a few of these curators. Uh, some of them are young and some of them have refreshing ideas. So it's nice to work with, with them with a fresh roster of artists, like you mentioned. So we do make, uh, make sure that we have at least two or three curated shows uh, in a year. That's, that's the broad aim. Uh, rest of it depends really on when work is, is ready. Uh, we do try and program in advance, but there's only so much that you can uh, predict in these matters. When you say advance, it's like a year, six months, how, how much? No, it's at least a year. Uh, some, some artists have a cycle of maybe, they take three to, three to four years to, to come up with a show. Some artists are more uh, prolific. But it really is, there is no set rule to this. So a lot of the programming, like I said, or reprogramming is really based on work. I mean, the show being ready, being show worthy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does happen quite often that uh, we may have to, to shuffle the, the program. But there is enough that Sakshi has on its roster for us to have shows uh, that, we are, that we are happy with and hopefully our uh, uh, customer clients are also happy with. Bhavna, very similar question to you as well. I know you also represent a lot of artists and um, a lot of emerging artists as well. So how do you, how do you sort of negotiate between the well-known ones and the emerging ones? And also when you have so many artists, how do you give, make sure you give them all sort of uh, space and gallery space and attention? Because essentially the job of the artist is to build their brand, right? Constant and... Uh 
and if I may say so, successful in building the brand. However, uh, because you kind of show them in the various uh, platforms constantly, younger artists, you know, I feel that somewhere uh, the body of work for solos gets a little bit sidelined, mm. you know, which I've been feeling more recently because the pressure on them to perform also because of social media, as we were discussing, you know, a lot of things yeah. are out there and for this. And, uh, and so we have, you know, fairs slotted throughout not just India, but international also. Uh, we have the, uh, uh, something that I've, I'm very proud of uh, uh, starting in Delhi, Delhi Contemporary Art Week. And uh, so we have that. So we have these lot of these uh, group, group collective programming that the young artists are part of. So their work is very much out there, but uh, who, you know, who do we focus on and, uh, you know, whose solo should come up and all, is all on the body of work that is ready and created as Sanjay mentioned, you know. It's always about that. We g I give them a, you know, a timeline <coughs> that, okay, you know, next year I would like to, but then I also want them to be seen in these various events that happen throughout the year, which actually gets them very good mileage and eyeballs, although that I do strongly feel that the solos of an artist make or break their career at times. Mm -hmm. So a lot of artists get lost, they keep showing in group shows, selling group shows, you know, all of that, and don't really have a body of work together. Having said that, one of the most successful artists of our times, Ravinder Reddy, has had probably two solos in his career. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but then he, that is a, you know, exception to the rule, yeah. So another question to both of you, because I know uh, of the three of you that uh, Sakshi is probably the only one right now who actually hires external curators. Bhavana, I know you don't, so can you, no, you do, okay, based on our conversation, I thought you do, you do too. Showing, I'm showing uh, that from, our but, two, from the second show onward, we had at least, we've had at least two year, two or one uh, curatorial interventions, simply because I like the idea of you know, showing new ideas, which not necessarily only I have, you know. So yeah, we've always had a curator shows right from the beginning. External curator shows, yeah. yeah. So the question I have for both of you in that case is that I feel like, you know, galleries at the, end, at the end of the day know their audience really well. You know your buyers, you know your collectors, you know where the eye is, you know the trends because you're going all over the world looking at art. Don't you think bringing an external curator sort of gives a bit of distance between you and the audience and what they're looking for? Yeah, I understand there's a fresh perspective. I totally get that. But in terms of when you're going, um, when you have a good run, right, in terms of selling out shows, do you think ex bringing an external curator could, you know, give a gap or give some distance between what they're expecting in terms of sales? Our last show, actually, the, the middle show between our first show and the second show um, was curated by a young curator. She was 27 years old. It was very different from our programming, to be honest. It was not what we would, um, it was, it's not what we are looking at. You know, Sunena and I are looking at a very different kind of, um, we're looking at art with artist's work, which is very different from what she brought in. She brought it, brought it in with more of like a, uh, she's an anthropologist, so that from, from that lens. Um, I think it's nice to break uh, the chain once in a while, but yeah, I agree with you that, I mean, it, ultimately it is our taste and I don't think it was my best show. I think the last two solo shows have been much stronger. Mm. So, yeah. One thing I would like to state is that galleries do not tailor shows for their clients, so to speak. I mean, you, you have, it's, we don't, we're not so conscious when we put shows together that this is a client and we uh, client base that we have and the shows should kind of be targeted yeah. towards them. I think that would be taking clients also too lightly. Mm -hmm. uh, clients have esoteric taste. There are new people uh, all the time. What we try and do is be honest to the act of curation, be honest uh, to the kind of art that we are, that we are showing. And I think that drives, at least as far as uh, Sakshi is concerned, uh, to summarize what Robert Hughes says in art that moves from a sense of feeling to meaning. You know, that kind of negotiates between a sense of history and an experience of the world. So that's broadly speaking what, what drives us. This, this is what we navigate with. Something that moves from feeling to meaning. And so that is the essential truth that we seek in the work that we try and show. Uh, I think curation, uh, solo, all of that follows uh, from that, that core thought. Uh, it's, it's more, more detailed. 
but yes curation bringing in curators again we are conscious of curators who have a similar aesthetic. thought a similar aesthetic somebody who we will trust will mm. come up they may not always work i think there are risks in terms of uh, commissioning works for example commissioned works usually are very iffy mm. uh, but in curation one has to be careful hopefully it, it works out uh, more often than it doesn't so uh, i agree completely that we do not uh, plan the gallery program as per our clients but we do, do have a certain aesthetic which is why we are in the business right and sometimes that tends to go completely off uh, you know also i realize in the like in my beginning years because i was so i was coming from a space of like oh i wanted to be a curator i did not get enough space i want to give this space mm. to you know newer older experimental curators i realized that at some point when i got feedback from the audience and i'm not just saying collectors they were confused yeah they were confused because uh, you know they said okay uh, they were beginning to get a kind of a, a hang around what is represented by a certain gallery you know so india as as indian art market we come into that very very late you know all the artists have been working with all kinds of galleries in all kinds of cities so this whole thing of represented artists so when we constantly did a bunch of curated shows the from the collector point of view they were kind of like is this your artist is this this one's mm. artist you know who's showing this but you showed this you know okay you have this kind of show always yeah. do you don't you have that artist so you know i realized that they're also the young i mean especially the younger uh, collectors who are not so used used to you know going to galleries were kind of you know and not that that made me change my program a bit but i tweaked it around and said okay only i'm going to do very very interesting projects now again that's like you know we said it's a risk yeah. because it depends on the show and the outcome of uh, what is going to come so you know but from the general audience also you know i realized that okay i'm there is something missing in what is the focus where am i in all this Correct. you know where exactly am I? Yeah. which is which takes some time for any way any gallery that to wants settle. wants to have a voice so you know otherwise but there are a lot of galleries who are very successful in following the curator model because mm. they didn't they were not interested in the concept they were more interested that a curator just brings in some artists and artists mm. you right. know so for them it is not about that you know it's coming in with an idea or right. you know it is going to be a shift in my program it's more like if you ask a curator then they can get an artist and that can come to my gallery and there are galleries which are very successful with that kind with of that program also yeah. yeah yeah so i'm going to throw it back at atyan because what i love about kimol collab is that you're trying something new right it's a residency model model uh, you are for somebody where you know what we what what i do as a living is trying to find new models of uh, revenue trying to find new ways to do things and to bring newer artists into the market which is what i think you're also trying to do right so essentially like the world is your canvas you're not restricted by any gallery model you're not restricted by a segment of artists who you represent who you need to support you can actually work with anybody so where do you start and i know you have started since march how is it going in, and what do you th what have you learned from this process so far and how is that leading your curation going forward uh, when we started looking for artists you can hear me um it, i thought there was like this wide spectrum and there were so many artists to look at but then when you actually get down to it you, you want to work with an artist that is taking their career very seriously as an artist you know you don't want to work with someone who's delving in design but then also making a few paintings on the side so we were we were a bit wary of that when we were looking for artists um so when we looked at vinita mungi for example our first artist she has dedicated her to her uh, a large part of her day to going to her studio very diligently and working so i mean see work, working with an artist is also getting to know their personality like it's it's very important and doing zoom calls we did a lot of zoom calls with uh, artists based across the country and i don't think it that it, a, a gallery and artist everyone will agree my mom says this all the time um is a very very personal relationship it's like a marriage and you need to know uh, your artist very very well and i mean you're dealing with their highs lows and you know your they work we're not we're not trying to like 
base our, we're trying to represent artists, but like slowly, gradually, once we get to know their practice, if we really see value in their rigor, and they want to take their careers forward as an artist, you know, that's very, very important to us. And that was not something we initially knew that we were starting out. We didn't start out with that thought process, but it's very, very important for us. That's like, oh. What made you choose the residency sort of So model? actually, it was just the nature of the space. It's a home. And um, it, we do want to open it up eventually to international artists as well, because um, they can come, work, you know, experience Bombay. So our first residency was a trial and error. We didn't um, know how to really program a residency. We've got a lot of tips along the way, because you know, I mean, we give the space, but then you know, we how do we? Uh, give the resources of Bombay to the artists. You know, we have to be that link. And I mean, we were learning along the way. I mean, for example, Tarani, trying to find welders for her was already like a little bit of a struggle. Um, I mean, we could have got Gurjeet to work with craftsmen. And I mean, there was, there's a lot we can do, which we didn't do in the beginning. And I mean, we're looking back in hindsight, we know that we can go forward and link the city to the artists because what's the point of them? Just they could be in their studio then and what's the resource that we're giving them? So that's one learning. But having, um, when Gurjeet was in the residency, he really, really thrived because he was out of his um, environment. He lives in a little village in Punjab and suddenly he was in the big city and getting invited to parties, putting us on guest lists at Soho House parties. And I was like, wow, this little village boy is taking me to parties. The, and, and then also creating the work in the space that they will display it in. Um, ne not necessarily did the work become very site specific. They're also experimenting their own practice right now. So it's not site specific work to the space. Um, but that could also be a possibility with the residency. Um, and yeah, just also, um, we do have a senior artist from Kemur Prescott Road. So the um, interaction of an older artist coming to a studio visit, uh, to do a studio visit with a younger artist is extremely fulfilling for the younger artist. So we had Atul Dodia, for example, come and visit the artist, which was really, really wonderful for them. So, yeah. One more question I have okay. for you, hold on, um, is the one thing that I really appreciate that you're also doing very actively is trying to bring in a non-gallery audience who yeah. are not used to going to galleries, it's not on their you know, weekly calendar or social calendar, and you're trying to bring that audience into this space, which is again very exciting. So, but now that you've sort of started doing it, what are, you, what are some of those like, key uh, indicators that you're looking for in terms of uh, repeat audience or converting them into buyers or what is it that you're looking for? Um, okay, so I'm a Bombay girl. I have my art world life and then I also have my Bombay life, which is people who have no idea what's going on with the art world. And I mean, oh, what is art? And I get asked all these weird questions. Oh, so you're an artist. And I mean, just um, basic questions. And uh, we, I, I felt like when we started this program through I don't know how many people I've tapped into, but through of the circle of my, my network of my school friends, Sunaina's networks of her Bombay friends and school friends or whatever, we've managed to like capital, I mean, capture a few more Bombay kids, you know, who don't actually go to galleries. Our openings are a little bit like nightclubs because we always have music playing. That day we were like, can people leave already? Because we want to go home, our boys are tired. But um, it's really nice to see new people come in. I've been going to galleries all my life. I've been born in a gallery, literally. Um, and the, the, it's a totally fresh bunch of people. I haven't been seeing this crowd at all. And I mean, there are so many new people's faces I don't even recognize at openings. Um, what's very, very rewarding is when a young collector buys a work. We're happy to give them a long-term payment plan. Um, I mean. I'd, I'd like, it's great that it's going into a good, like, work is going into a good collection of an established, or, I mean, a senior collector, but it's way more rewarding for me to sell it to a younger collector who's just bought their first work or second work. And uh, we're trying to keep the price point also reasonably low. 
I mean, one lakh, two lakhs is not low for someone like me. You know, I mean, I want I want art to be affordable to me and my friends. And I mean, we don't have like two lakhs to just throw away on an artwork. You know, so um, it is a lot of money. They people are putting in. You know, it's a it's a more than a month salary for many people, and. Um, we we want we want them to know that this is an investment also you know right, you, yeah. you people people are coming and buying art with the investment purpose also so we yeah. have to face that yeah. and that's also very important to to understand that um, the artist's career goes hand in hand with the investment they, their yeah. rigor their like time that they'll give to their work as a, and practice is equally important Bhavna, I have one more question for you because you know how Atyan was talking about how she wears multiple hats. She was also talking about how she just wants to sometimes quit everything and just go to yoga, which I think we all want to do at some point in time in our lives. But um, I'd love to talk to you about like Take On Art, right? I think it's one of uh, such a great magazine that I think uh, a lot of us here in the art world regularly read, and I know it's very widely read as well. The question is, like I know you mentioned a little bit about it in your in your presentation that you want to keep the en entities separate and it was intentional. But I also see there's a lot of synergy between both of them, right? In terms of trends, in terms of critiquing art, in terms of you know featuring artists and key artists. Why is it that you feel marrying them um, may not be what you want to do? A good question. <laughs> I don't know. I think I've, I've recently realized that maybe I'm being too rigid about it, that, uh, that I was afraid that I'd be, uh, you know, when, when it actually started, a lot of people felt that, oh, probably it's a platform to promote the artist that Latitude will be showing. Yeah. And, uh, and which is what a lot of p galleries have been doing. They bring out a newsletter and which, you know, they sometimes print it and it's called a magazine then, which is not the same as an independent arts journal and uh, uh, and the programming also uh, I've never ever done a take event inside the latitude space so uh, yeah so I kind of kept that very very strictly uh, you know and and also tried to make an extra effort that when we do things outside of the city you know uh, they're always in a kind of a neutral space in a in a public institution uh, whatever museums that we have around the city may be there in, in, and uh, in art colleges, things like that. But uh, more recently I felt that, yeah, there is, because it's eventually the same person driving the same... Teams are different, but the driving force is the same. So I think the conflict bit, which, which is very, very overlapping in South Asia. See, because I said, uh, which I mentioned when I was talking, that we don't have independent... Uh, you know, uh, institutions uh, supporting different things like, you know, a gallery doubles up for a residency because they're not enough maybe or the ones which are they don't have this kind of a great space, you know. So we do, we do in South Asia, we, we play all these multiple hats and roles, foundation and a gallery and, and, you know, magazine in my case or things like that. So, and I found sometime I found that overlap a little bit, you know, like a... I mean, yeah, it is. This is kind of art world gossip, but you know, if there's a there's a jurist uh, who's a gallerist who's on the jury of a certain award, you know, the uh, the gallery the uh, the artists of the gallery get the award, you know, something. But these are these are overlaps which are evident because we don't have enough infrastructure and support from the government and all of these. Uh, this now patronage has come in; it's a different kind. So philanthropy patronage, and now we can segregate the two. So yeah, maybe going forward, I will try to bring in more synergy between the two. But for now, like I said, just for the for the fear of being like, you know, and, and especially also because the magazine works in an international sphere. So it's not just India centric. We do a lot of things uh, with, uh, you know, international writers are there who are part of it, you know, museums where they take this as very a black and white space, you know, where conflict of interest is taken very, very seriously. Yeah. So maybe... I was coming from there, but I guess I should become South Asian in this context. <laughs> Post-pandemic <laughs> <No>. revelations. <laughs> okay, so one of the last questions for the evening I'm going to uh, ask Sanjay is, um, since you've been curating, and I, and I think you have probably seen so many of these models and, tr and trials of how people program and curate change over the last 30 plus years, what are some of the... Um, key lessons that you have learned in this and what, is, what has been the hardest thing to adapt when it comes to curation? 
as a gallery. Firstly, I must uh, say that guys, please subscribe to Take On Art. Yes. It's, it's a wonderful magazine. And I'm so glad that somebody is conscious of this term called conflict of interest. We all revel in it in, in India, we ignore it, but please keep them separate. We like it the way it is. I'm also so glad to hear from a young gallerist, so I see youngsters in the audience. Please support young galleries. Uh, they need all your support. Uh, to come back to the curatorial question, uh, I feel we're, we're flogging a dead horse here. Uh, I mean, curation, curation is important, and curated, uh, curated shows have their space. What I would like to see much more is curated shows in museums. Uh, what happens in the gallery space is there's always a commercial aspect which enters uh, the gallery space. And like Bhavna was mentioning, sometimes it overtakes uh, the, the entire act of curation because this commercial aspect dominates. But a museum space, and we don't have many of them, but we do have some coming up, uh, is where I think curation is shown at its best, where the curator is given uh, pretty much a budget and freedom to to come up with uh, her or his, his ideas and to work, to work with those ideas and also access to work which is not specific to a gallery, access to work which can be historic. Uh, so you have a much wider canvas to choose from. So I think curation has a huge role to play in museums and I, I hope to see uh, more such shows happen in museums. Sorry, not a direct answer, but I, I just thought I'll mention this. Okay, all right. So I think we can maybe open it out to the Q&A with the audience. But before that, are you guys up for a rapid fire round? Yeah. A quick, yeah? OK. Shall we do a rapid fire round? Yes? No? Audience? OK, cool. So I'm going to use that mic. I think the audience needs a drink. <laughs> OK, these are just fun questions. Nothing to be taken too seriously. Um, it's, it's just for all of us to sort of recap whatever we've spoken about. Um, so we'll go in order. Uh, let's do Bhavana first, Sanjay second, and uh, Atyan third. So I'll ask this question, and then in this order, you guys will reply. One word, yes or no, agree, disagree. That's it. We don't want anything longer than one word, except for one question, which I will tell you about. All right? We're good? So do just use the mic, because otherwise somebody may not be able to hear you. And it's quick. It's rapid. No thinking too much. Okay, thank you. All right. No, because we're not going to choose any winners. We're all winners tonight. So no winners, just a lot of honesty, hopefully. All right, number one, should galleries only show artists who have representation? No. Easy no. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to foster. Uh, uh, okay, no or yes? Yeah. Okay. Should galleries only work with artists who have a background in arts education? Easy no. Very easy no. I'm a writer uh, who's not... No, no. Okay. Do artists sell better when they are displayed at galleries from their own city, town, or state? No. No. Oh, actually, no. no. <laughs> you're saying no, but you're ahead. <laughs> um, hiring an external curator adds an additional level of distance between the gallery's audience and and the gallerist? No. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Is it true that younger artists do not wish to be represented and prefer to build their own brand? Yes. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. In order, uh, is it true that younger artists today do not wish to be represented by any gallery and prefer to build their own brand? Some and some. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Use the mic. A lot. A lot meaning yes. Yeah, okay. Guys, yes or no answers, please. Thank you. Is it true, uh, sorry. Um, is there an upward trend today, thanks to social media, where buyers directly buy from the artist rather than go through the gallery? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. No, I don't know. Okay. Do you think the complex writing in artist statements of curatorial notes often creates more ambiguity and intimidates new audiences? 100%. Bhavna? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm listening to the audience. I think they're, they're, they're answering better. Atyan? 100%. Okay. 
Do you feel contemporary art in the next 20 years will reach larger audiences in India? 100%. I think you'll have to ask Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Hope so. Wow, nobody is answering yes or no, but okay. Do you believe that the metaverse and Web3 is the next best place to be for, an, for a gallery? I'm confused. Huh? Confused. confused. One word you said confused. Okay. Perhaps, yeah. Perhaps, yes, it is the next best place, yeah. Maybe. Do you think contemporary art should be sold as NFTs in the Web3 market? <laughs> no. No. Hell no. Hell no. Okay. Do you believe galleries need to be doing more to discover new talent? I think we do enough. Huh? We do enough. You have to answer. This is no. <laughs> you have to answer. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think gallerists in general need to be doing more? Uh, no, I can... Okay. Atyan? Trying. What does try mean, yes? Yeah. Okay. Knowing what you know today about running a gallery, would you still rec recommend it to the young, your younger selves? No. 100%, uh, yes. Yeah. Atya? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, this, this is not a one-word answer, but uh, this is just some fun. Tell us one little dirty secret about the art industry. There are many, just choose one. <laughs> Rapid fire quickly. Nobody's understood when was modernism by Gita Kapoor. <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat that? I think some people didn't hear it. <laughs> Sanjay? One little dirty secret. I'll go last. <laughs> Okay, um, are the galleries poaching artists that you've uh, created? Yeah. It's dirty, I don't know, but okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure it's a secret, but art is the most imperfect market that exists, that flies in face of every economic theory ever known to mankind, and yet it's doing very well. We just sold 1.5 billion right. uh, a few days ago in Christie's, but really, that's... That's a secret to the art world, that it's the most imperfect market that exists. Okay, the last question. Do you think the Madras Art Weekend is here to stay? Yes. Uh, I'd like to see more galleries involved and more shows happening next time. I hope, so. I hope that happens. Yeah. Thank you for indulging me in this little rapid fire round. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful insights. It was great. So. Um, uh, I'm asking this question from a point of view of an artist. I am an artist. So uh, what should an artist look for uh, when he or she is like uh, sending his portfolios to the galleries? Like, uh, and also the second question is like, uh, how do we stay in, a, in the gallery's radar? Like if an artist is look, if the gallery is looking for artists, and how would the artist stay in that radar? Like, so I've, I, I actually did a workshop on this in a few colleges, uh, including one of them when you were there in Baroda, if you remember, on how to edit your CV. You know, so a, one very important thing when you approach a gallery is how you address. We get a lot of mail, sometimes very interesting art, which is, be, which is CC every gallery in the country. <laughs> so don't do that for starters. You know, like it's like, dear all, I'm an artist, and every gallery in the country, probably that's a mailing list from the India Art Fair or, you know, <laughs> or somewhere. So uh, try to make it personal. If you've met the person, to kind of say, okay, I met you, I'd like to, you know, send you, you the work. Do not send heavy, heavy, heavy PDFs. Because now we have, of course, V transfers and do drop boxes, but earlier there used to be this, and we should just literally make your. So these are very logistical things, you know like that and, and addressing it, finding out who the gallery owners and maybe their name in, instead of saying dear and you know, and dear and then I'm an artist, you know, like that. Also, like I said, CV editing is, is something that I, is, should be a part of our 
college curriculum, but it is not, you know, we are kind of always talking about being this organic, amazing artist, and the moment you go out, you know, you have these people waiting for you to show you. But these are, these are very practical aspects of art making, uh, including, po including portfolio making, and, uh, um, and uh, which was the last thing we did a workshop on. Yeah, one more thing, it will come to me, yeah. But that is, so that, that is one thing, that, that is one way to approach them. I don't know what is the other way, maybe the local art scene where you kind of go to exhibitions and, uh, and, uh, and uh, strike a conversation with the gallerist uh, is one way to at least know them. And, uh, and only if you show is probably when you're in the radar. Now, right now we have social media, which is one way where gallerists see other artists' works. Uh, I think she's covered most of the practical aspects, but my only general advice would be that uh, be very, very careful making your first approach to a gallery. Uh, do it later than earlier. Uh, so you have to be really confident. Look, look for sounding boards. Look for senior artists with whom you can consult, get feedback. I mean, I, am I really ready as an artist? Uh, is this work really uh, something that I could take to galleries? Because galleries do get a lot of work. Uh, from, from a lo lot of artists. So uh, the first approach is, is very important. So take your time over it, and in the meanwhile, lead an interesting life, which hopefully filters into your art. Um, we also have been getting, especially because it is a younger program, but honestly, we do want to be able to give a platform to younger artists, but at the same time, we want the artists to also fit within our taste and our program and what we want to put out. So. It's very tricky. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's very hard, actually. But be very firm and quite often ignore all such advice. <laughs> <laughs> just do your thing. We have time for maybe just one or two more questions. So I would definitely, yes, the lady at the back. Thank you so much for walking us through your process and experiences I, uh, and sharing that you've been working with a lot of young artists. Um, and with working with contemporary artists, I'm sure you've discovered a lot of new com artists as well. And I just wanted to hear your stories and experiences about discovering someone new and what the process with them has been like. For to, each of you. to whom are you asking? All this of them. Okay, so with Gurjeet Singh, my new hot artist, um, he came in, and I mean, we act. I followed him on. Uh, I was following him on Instagram, just a random artist, because I had my eye out, but not didn't really know what I was looking for. Okay, looking and then we called him to Bombay, met him, and um, it's 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 a it's a personal relationship, honestly. So um, his punk, yeah. I must just state for the record that discovering a new artist is one of the most exciting aspects of. Uh, for the life of a gallery and uh, to see something like that grow over a period of time has been immensely rewarding i think it's one of the reasons that we that we are in what we are doing uh, it's a very fraught process it's not a smooth process it's unclean it's dirty quite often uh, you, you do make the odd wrong decision uh, you do sometimes don't take up a work maybe it's an off day you just see the portfolio you have you're having an off day but it's certainly very exciting but a very fraught process dealing uh, with, with new art, a new artist, because in the back of your, uh, the, art, the gallery's mind is, you know, it, it, does this have longevity? Uh, this artist, the person that I'm meeting, it's coming from the person, so what kind of a person is it? Uh, is this kind of person going to have something to say over a period of time? Because we have a sense of responsibility to our clients, to our, uh, those who have been with Sakshi over a period of time, so introducing an artist also has, uh, from the gallery's point of view, a sense of responsibility. So. It's a very careful decision, uh, but it's a, it's a very tricky, very fraught process. Uh, it's not the most efficient either. Uh, one artist that we discovered via email. So somebody who wrote to us randomly uh, did address me, but uh, uh, and, and now that we've been continuing to work with her for uh, so many years, and I'm always asked, how did you meet her? I said, well, she just wrote a random email, and we just picked that one portfolio and saw it, and then went to meet her and uh, and that's how the journey started up down like you said it's always trial and error but yeah because i'd shown the images earlier i thought i'll mention and share that story thanks who yes you and then maybe david if we have time and if yeah yeah uh, just uh, a question based on this landscape of metra is like how significant do you think is a regional collector plays a r major role on an artist profile like we we have a lot of uh, artists coming from Madras, like even 
Mr. Ashwin collects a lot of art and then exhibits a lot of art from Madras. And we don't see uh, uh, a major impact of in artists from Madras making uh, on a global pat platform. Do you think it's like based on a collector from, I mean, it is, is it based on a regional collector or is it based on the artist profile himself or herself? I think it's always not just about the region, but it is about the profile of the artist, no matter where he's from. So uh, I think uh, regions don't really matter when you go for on an international problem. It's always the art that speaks. And also, of course, international representation is via the galleries, which is why we are relevant. So it depends right. on which gallery is shown where and who kind of you know internationally saw it in which, which forum or platform and which curator kind of took it further. So sometimes it's curator driven, sometimes it's collector driven, sometimes museum individual driven. So, yeah. Uh, I just think that this Namo Uru principle, mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, uh, I think this location is an artifice. It really doesn't matter in today's world uh, where you're based or where you're located. Uh, and trying to uh, ring fence an artist as saying, who are the artists from Chennai, I don't think you're going to serve Chennai very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I would rather go away from, from that. Ashwin should answer that. I, I will answer that when I wrap up. <laughs> so I think in the interest of time, we'll wrap up. But our panelists are here, so I know a few people, few more people had questions, and, and you can always ask them in person. But thank you so much, Bhavna. Thank you so much, Sanjay. Thank you so much, uh, Atyan, for doing this. Um, and thank you so much, Upasana, for bringing uh, Madras Art Weekend to Chennai and to Madras. And thank you, uh, thank you Ashwin, for curating this. Thank you for helping, choosing me to moderate it. It's been a lot of fun. I also want to say that I spoke to very many people before, apart from the three panelists, to come up with these set of questions. And I do want a, um, uh, a big shout out to, of course, Ashwin and Natasha and Viraj and many artists who helped me. So just a shout out to all of them. So thank you, Ashwin. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Shreya. I think uh, You've done a fantastic job. I just called her and said, I don't have the bandwidth to think about moderating it. Please help me. So, so she stepped in and, and has done a fantastic job. Uh, thank you all for being here this evening, uh, besides switching the location on you and making you all travel through this rain. Uh, thank you, panelists, for coming all the way to Chennai. Uh, it's been you know, one of my passion projects is to bring people into Madras, into Chennai, because, uh, you know, when we're at the bottom of the bottom, uh, geographically and in the art world, uh, you know, you guys are rock stars for most of us here, and, and, and getting to uh, meet you and, and interact with you uh, has been, I think, a, a very precious opportunity today. And uh, to generally answer everybody, uh, a lot of the artists question about, uh, you know, how do you get into galleries or how do you get opportunities? I also have absolutely no answer, but what we did was we started the Ashwita Community Center. It's a white box cube in, in a commercial complex in Roy Peta where Hindustan and all the other art supply stores are. All of you are free to use it. Uh, you know, that's where we, that, I've not solved any problem, but we've given a space for the whole city. And thank you. Uh, it, you can you can use it. So the, now it's all up to artists and the art community in Chennai to come and call us and say, can we get this date? There are three lovely walls. There's a fantastic coffee shop outside, juice, uh, samosas. Uh, make what you want of that space, but uh, it's there for all people in Chennai to use. Uh, and and I, I'm just throwing the responsibility back at the art community here. Uh, hopefully, we'll create some programming around it. And as for our uh, primary gallery in Mylapore, uh, we hope to keep having more shows over this year. Our programming is focusing pretty much on uh, telling the story of modern art in Madras because we, at least I believe that we need to build that foundation story on top of which we can then build all the other fascinating things that we can do uh, with the arts here. So thank you very much. Um, hopefully I've thanked everybody. This is one en masse bulk thank you to everybody and everybody who supported us, our teams. Uh, there's nobody here from Ashita because we're all working remotely and, and we have people all over the country now. But um, Ashita, thanks you very, very much. Uh, we have, on the way out, you'll see our next program. It's on the 25th. This is at the gallery. If it rains, it'll still be at the gallery. Um, it's, it's on investing in art and the art market. We have Arvind Vijay Mohan uh, from Artray India and now the Indian 
an art investor who's going to come and throw some fascinating numbers at you. So everything you heard today is going to be the opposite of <laughs> that. So so all your artists are going to be confused even more. But it's 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 a good uh, talk to listen to, and I hope to see all of you there uh, in in a couple of weeks. So thank you very much. The bar is open. Hard close at nine o'clock. So enjoy yourselves. Thanks.